thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Well, the first step in building our 350 is to put our crankshaft in. Now, one of the most common comments I get is, how do you check the clearance or do you check the clearance on the main bearings? My answer is usually, I let the machine shop do it. But when I make that comment or tell people I let the machine shop do it, a lot of people say, don't trust the machine shop, do it yourself, check it anyway. Now, I'm not going to say don't check it yourself, and you probably should, checking is good, so we're going to check it now just to make sure it's okay. But I completely trust my machine shop. I work very close with them. And over many, many years and many, many engines, I have never had a problem. As a matter of fact, they provide me all the clearances for each one of the bearings, and I know they're doing a good job. Not only that, let's say I were to have my crank ground and I had my block here and I put it all together and I checked the clearance and let's say one of the bearings or, or one of the main surfaces was off on the crank. Something was off and I had to have it open up a thousands and a half. How am I going to do it? I'd have to take it back to the machine shop and tell them what to do. So it's better off to take the block and the crank to the machine shop, have them put the bearings in, clamp it up and they grind the, the crank to match the block. That's the best way to do it, and I have never had a problem. Now, if you don't trust your machine shop, certainly you can check it. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it, and I'll show you a couple ways you can check your clearances on your main bearings to your crank, and uh, we'll check that, and then we'll move on. Now, the first way you can do this is with a caliper, and what I did was I went and I measured the main bearing on the crankshaft, and you can see it measures just about two, two I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 2.447. 2.447 is what it measures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to try and gently put it inside this bearing here. And, the, and the, the difficult thing about doing this is you run the risk of scratching your bearing. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to find the biggest spot. And there we go. It goes up to 450. Now this is a standard oversized bearing, so the crank was ground to fit for an oversized bearing. So I, right here I have uh, three thousandths of clearance on this bearing. Now you can go ahead and do that for all the journals all the way down. Uh, but like I said, you, when you put this in here, you run the risk of scratching your bearing, which I'm not really too excited about doing that and running the risk of putting a gouge in my bearing. So I, I, I don't prefer this method, but you can do it this way. The other way is to use a plastic gauge. Okay, everybody who watches my videos knows you don't touch a bearing with your bare fingers. I did, I screwed up, but I'm going to clean that bearing up before I put the crank in. The next method is using something called plastic gauge. It's plastic gauge is nothing more than a very thin wax filament. You can see that green. It comes in different colors, green, blue, red, yellow. And this is for the uh, range of, of uh, thickness or clearance that I want. This goes from one to three thousandths. Uh, you can see here the range for this is one to three thousandths. The spec for the clearance on there is two to three thousandths. So I will take my plastic gauge, and it's it's it's, it's very it's very it's a very light material, so you can just break it off, and you sit your plastic gauge on your bearing surface just like that. Now I'll put the bearing cap on there and torque it down, and then when you take it off, all you do is match it up with the gauge on here and it tells you what your clearance is. So let me put my, I'll put the cap on, torque it down, and we'll take it back off. Okay, now take my bearing cap off. I'll set that aside. And you see the residue left by the plastic gauge and I'll turn it. Maybe you can get a better look at the, uh, better look at that. And all I do is I take my wrapper that it came in and I match it up with the size of the mark left behind and it's it's bigger than two, so it might be one and a half thousandths. The spec is two to three, and it's probably, it's actually a little more than one and a half, so it's probably closer to two. So we're good on this. And all you have to do is repeat it on all your bearings, all the way down, all your bearing caps, and you're sure that you will have the proper clearance. Now I can clean this off, pull the crank out, and we can install it. Now for Crank bearings, cam bearings, that kind of assembly. I use a really good professional grade assembly lube. It's a PTFE. And I've washed all my bearings off. I wiped them off. Made sure they're clean. I blew them off so there's no, nothing on the bearings. No FM. Foreign material. I'm just going to put a light coat on the bearing surfaces. On both sides. You don't want to put too much in. You don't need excess. You don't want it dripping inside the engine. Because it can... Uh, 
clump up. So you just need it on the bearing surfaces. And then if we put the crank in, we'll check the thrust. Now before I set the crank in place, a couple things to note. I have a lot of lube on my thrust surface on the bearing in the back, and I have my rear main seal sitting in place. And if you'll notice, the V, or the big part of the, of the uh, gasket, points towards the back. That's the way that goes in. And it's also not flush. You see how this end is a little lower than the edge here? And that's so that the gap in the uh, rear seal is not even with the gap in the bearing, so it doesn't create a leak path. If you had it even, it make it make it tough to make it seal. I also have an anaerobic sealant on there. You can use any anaerobic sealant on your mating surfaces for your bearing, like Loctite 518, Permatex, Permatex makes one. It's uh, 51, 531, and that helps there. Now I can put some lube on here, on the, my, uh, my surface for my rear seal, and I can set the crank in place. Okay, now I can set my crankshaft in place very, very carefully. Slowly. Like that. Give it a quick rotation to make sure it's good. Now, I can put my main bearing caps on. And all I'm going to do is put some lube on the inside of the cap. Just like that. Spread it around. Of course that fell. A little bit on the, on the crank. Sit that in place, and I'll set them all in place. When I go to put the rear main cap on, I got the seal offset so it matches it in there, and I have the sealant on the rear main cap. And when I sit this in place, the gasket or the rear main seal lines up just right. The offset with the rear seal. And the offset, the rear mirror bearing cap, main bearing cap goes on. And it centers itself right in place. I can just tap these in place before torquing them down. Turn the crank to make sure it rotates nice and even. Nice and smooth. Okay, nice and smooth. Start torquing these down. Torque pattern on this is pretty simple. The inner bolts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'll go to 70 foot-pounds. The outer ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, go to 65. So, set my torque wrench, 70, we'll start torquing these down. I can drop it down to 65. Do my outer bolts. Alright, the last thing I'm going to do 
To finish a crank assembly or crank installation, now that it rotates nice and smooth, I want to check my end play, and I'm going to use my calibrated BFS to push my crank backward and forward. First, I'm going to push it all the way to the back, and I'm going to set my dial indicator at zero, make sure it's at zero. Now, for crankshafts, you usually want four to nine thousand, so I want to make sure I have four to nine. Now I can push it forward, and we'll see how much we get. We have at least four. Looks like a little over four. Push it backward, make sure we're still at zero. We're still at zero. Now if I push it forward, it's just over four. So it's about five thousandths on the end plate. We're great there. All right, our crank is installed. All the bearing caps torqued down. We have uh, just over four thousandths of end play in the crank, and it turns nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. All the way around, no problem. Awesome. Okay, next we'll move on to gapping our piston rings, putting the pistons in, and completing the rotate and assembly. Now, if you'd like to follow along with this video series, please click on the subscribe button below. And if you'd like to get a notification every time I upload a video, click on that little bell, and you'll get a notification when I upload a video. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.